Hello and welcome. I am your host, the Sith C, and today I'm ranking the Harry Potter movies. So that's one to eight, and the two Fantastic Beast movies. And this is quite big. You know, it's the first time that I've ever covered Harry Potter on the channel. But Harry Potter is a huge franchise, and it would be a big mistake if you ask me to not cover it on the channel. Uh, this is just my opinion, uh, though I am uh, bearing in mind the, th the views of other people and just the impact that each of these films has had on the, the whole genre as well as just media in general. So, yeah, this is mine. So if, if, I, if your favourite movie is at the bottom, then I'm sorry, okay? This is just my list. So, first of all, let's start with... Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This was a huge movie when it came out. It was absolutely huge and very risky as well. It was directed by Christopher Columbus and wow, I mean, you're very, very lucky to have the three young actors that they did. If it was any other, if it was other actors and they weren't good, then that, that could have been the end of the franchise from the start. So it, had, it did a really great job of establishing establishing this world, adapting uh, the books faithfully, and create, introducing us to this amazing world with Hogwarts. And it really started the whole look and feel for the franchise as it moved forwards. I feel it's a bit dated, just a bit dated in ways, though it does hold up pretty well. Uh, so, but I... I this film is not necessarily what I enjoy the most about Harry Potter, but I, I it's still, if, if I'm with the family, if I want to, if we're going to watch Harry Potter, we usually end up putting this one on. So I'm actually going to put this in A. It's the one that started it all. It introduced us to this world of Harry Potter, and it did a good job. So next we have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I feel that this was actually a step up from the last film. I think it's much more interesting. I think that it, it, it it's more serious. I think that the visual effects are improved. Well, of course, that's due to time and the development of everything at the time. But still, it was an improvement. So it has to get credit there. Uh, I, I do feel like um, there was a lot more focus on... Uh, on the actual uh, relationship between the different characters, uh, I also loved the whole. The, I, pre I way prefer the mystery at the end, you know, and the, everything that's going on with Tom Riddle's diary, much more interesting to me. Also, the, the the introduction of Dobby, the most annoying character, but also the one that is also quite quite amusing. Uh, so I think we can all relate with Dobby uh, in some ways. So you know, it's not bad. Also pretty cool set design. I mean, if you look at the actual Chamber of Secrets itself, it's such a cool looking design. It was really cool to go back to it in Harry Potter, Deathly Hallows Part 2. So I'm, I'm going to put this in A as well. It is a solid, solid, solid movie. Um, well, maybe, but I, I think that it goes above uh, Chamber of Secrets. I mean, I mean, Philosopher's Stone for me. I mean, if you're in America, you call it Sorcerer's Stone, but it's the Philosopher's Stone. I'm British. This is a British franchise. It's the Philosopher's Stone. Thank you. Okay, so now we have Azkaban. We have Azkaban. We have The Prisoner of Azkaban. And this is such an amazing movie. Okay, so we've changed directors at this point, And wow. It's really quite a tonal shift, but it still stays true to what had been established by Christopher Columbus. Uh, I'm not. I, I don't know the names of these directors off by heart, so I do apologise. This isn't my main franchise, you know. If it was Star Wars, I'd know it all. But no, really, really, really lovely um, and very well directed uh, movie. Um, I love everything with Sirius Black. The framing, everything, the 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 mise en scène. Mise en scène's a, a term in a video and film production, uh, my course that I do, where it's basically everything that's in frame. So the mise-en-scene. So uh, every, everything that's chosen to be in frame in this movie feels so... Um, it, it all feels related to the story. It fits the narrative and it really helps to um, 
adds to the story. I think Lupin, Lupin's one of the best teachers in, in Harry Potter, for sure. Um, again, there's a huge step up. And also, everything feels a lot older. It's really cool, because in a way, it feels like we're growing up with the, the cast uh, as well. And with that, the story matures, and that's really felt, uh, it really starts to be felt in this film. It's quite a step up from the last one. Uh, really, it's just such an awesome film. Great direction, probably the best directed movie. Uh, but I, so I'm going to have to put this into the S tier. Next, we have Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Uh, I have to admit, it's been quite a while since I've watched the Goblet of Fire. I know it's one of the longest films in the Harry Potter, um, the Harry Potter catalogue. Uh, I, I know, I've, re I've read all of the Harry Potter books, so I know that there are bits of this where it's not actually completely faithful to the books. Uh, there are certain scenes where you just wish you could see more, so I think the one, an example that screams out to me is when the, when, when is the Quidditch World Cup, it just brushes over that very quickly, which is quite a shame. Uh, but it is quite a long movie, and I do understand there was a lot that they had to get into the movie, and they had to be careful with what they chose. Um, one thing that was concerning, though, was that the director, he hadn't actually read any of the Harry Potter books uh, before he was hired, which is quite bizarre to me. Um, but it is really, it's a really fun, fun movie. It is good. Um, there's some really awesome and iconic scenes, uh, but... I think it has to go into the B tier, just because it is it is it lacks the same sort of feel as the other ones in the sense that it's just not as well constructed as the others. Though I mean, the best of this movie is amazing. Like the best scenes are so so cool, especially it 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 brought the idea when we were introduced to Voldemort back in the flesh properly, which is awesome. And you have that, but and it also introduces us the idea of like the the, the dueling uh, with the with the um, the wands. Uh, the way that it's presented is incredible. Such an awesome awesome creative idea, but it's just it doesn't. It's not at the same level as the other ones, unfortunately. Though it is a lot of fun, so I'm going to have to put it in the B tier. I also know that other people sort of feel the same way. So next we have my personal favourite on the list. We have Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. And this is just such an awesome fun movie. This is the first uh, Harry Potter movie and the, uh, the, that, that's directed by David Yates and ever since he's been directing Harry Potter and there's a clear reason why. He absolutely knows how to have the fun part of Harry Potter, the playful part of the Harry Potter book, uh, movies, uh, but then he also, he, he can be very serious, and he's got a really great uh, way of visualising everything, I think the the way that what, um, spells work um, in this movie is particularly improved. I also really love that, actually, that the Order of the Phoenix... It wasn't the the best of the books, but it was just... But this, the movie, was just exceptional, and it was really well realised. I think visually it was a great movie. Uh, also, it introduces the most awful, 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 awful character of the franchise, but in a really good way. So, um, Dolores Umbridge, like a villain you can absolutely despise, and it's just done so 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 well um i feel like harry's really really interesting in this one as well uh, dealing with all of the mistrust that the wizarding community has um against him um the way uh, the way that um the way that the the newspapers work as well it reminds me of azkaban um but it is really used so effectively and it's great it's such a great movie i love it i have so much fun watching this movie so i'm gonna to have to put this at top of the s tier uh, that's my personal uh, one there so next we have harry potter 
and the half blood prince and this is tricky because this is one of the best books for sure like this was one of the best books but unfortunately it wasn't the best movie uh i free i feel like there was really interesting because there was a sort of i guess sepia tone to everything there was a quite an, uh, an artistic filter i think it was i think it was nominated for an oscar with the, the cinematography but don't hold me to that but it was it's a very great looking movie but it does feel extremely different to the others due to that i think also there were some issues with daniel radcliffe um uh behind the scenes and so it, it does kind of come across uh in the movie i mean he says that he can't even watch himself in this movie uh poor guy but yeah so it's it's the the, the it's really good looking movie and there's some really fun moments but it it's not it's certainly not at the same level as the other one so i'm going to have to put it in the c tier um not that I don't, uh, I wouldn't watch it. I mean, I, I watched it quite recently and I had a good time watching it, but it it doesn't have the same sort of draw to me that the other ones do. So I'm, I'm putting it in the C tier. Uh, so next we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. And this is where I'm very different from everyone else. And it actually kind of drives me nuts, this. It really does. I love this movie. I think it's so awesome, but a lot of people seem to have a problem with it. I, I don't. I don't really understand it. I don't know whether it's because you don't go to Hogwarts in this movie or what. But people just look at this movie and they're like, "Oh, it's such a way. Oh, it's so bad." It's. I think it's brilliant. I think it's really cool to explore the Wizarding World outside of um, Hogwarts for once and follow our three main characters that we've got to know in the previous six movies um in a different way see them in a different position they're all hunting the horcruxes now uh, and it's really cool seeing them work work things out outside of the the, the sort of safe well i'd say safety but i mean it's hogwarts everything goes wrong at hogwarts apparently a school but yeah sure i think health and safety is not quite the same in the wizarding world as it is the the muggle world but yeah so I don't know, but I actually have a lot of fun with this movie. So I'm going to have to put it in the, uh, I, I'd say the top of the A category, maybe bottom of the A. B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt because I'll, I'll put it in the bottom of the A because I, I'd rather watch that than I'd, I'd, I wouldn't put it on the same level as Goblet of Fire. Um so I, I I put it with the the original two movies. Uh, next we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two, and wow, the, as the culmination of the previous, so as the culmination of eight movies, uh, and finishing the story told in the seven books, it is really good. Everything pays off so so well. I, it actually, I don't understand how the CG in all of these films, by the way, can look better than anything in Fantastic Beasts and Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. I don't understand that. How, how is that even possible, Warner Brothers? What's going on? But yeah, really, really, I love this movie. Like This is so good. This is like the end game. The, the, it is the end game of harry potter and it, it does such a great job it it really pays off everything snape in particular wow he really you really get to understand his character and the the final showdown uh, between harry and voldemort it's iconic and it's brilliant so a very clever movie as well in certain ways it really is so yeah 100 percent got to go into the I, i'd say the bottom of the s tier uh, really great movie um, yeah and now now on to the Fantastic Beasts movies and I think I'll just cover them together quite honestly I I'm not big on these movies I I think Fantastic Beasts is fine but then Crimes of Grindelwald Crimes of Gwyn Grindelwald all right 
That's one of the few movies that I honestly couldn't tell you what the start, beginning... You see, you see the start, the middle, and the end of the movie is. It, it, it Honestly, it was... I thought it was very poor. I really didn't think it was a good movie at all. I'm sorry if you like this movie, but the critics agree with me. The audience pretty much agrees with me. It's not a good movie. It is not a good movie. The, whatever way you really look at it... it it, it, it tries to be too clever with the different plot twists and whatever, and it really does show that, uh, certainly in my opinion, that uh, J.K. Rowling needs to stick to writing books and maybe not write them the same way, uh, write a screenplay the same way as you write a book, because it doesn't work, quite frankly. And it, it screamed that all over. The plot was all over the place. It didn't make sense uh, in a lot of way, in a lot of places. And it honestly felt quite underwhelming. So, uh, so I'm going to put the Fantastic Beasts. Okay, solid start. It, it, it was it wasn't the best film. Like really, it really wasn't. But I'll I'm putting it in D. You know, and then I'll put Crimes of Grind Grindelwald in F. I do not recommend that film to anyone, quite frankly. So that's my tier list. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with my list? It's just my list. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, please make sure to like, share and subscribe uh, to stay up, uh, stay up to date with all my content. And to, you know, check maybe go check out some of my other content. You might enjoy it. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. <laughs>